Hello, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today we are going to be learning how to fill a poly keg, which would be the same as filling a key keg. If you don't know anything about this channel, welcome. We're a small brewery located in the outskirts of Oslo in Norway. This is literally our backyard. Nice. Poly kegs or key kegs are the typical standard, I would say, for craft breweries here in Norway and also all around Europe. One of the big reasons being because they're made of plastic, they're actually incredibly light. We tend to prefer using poly kegs. The reason being they have a plastic dip tube that goes all the way down and that allows us to fill them upright as you'll see in the video and key kegs which do not have this have to be filled upside down so that way to prevent foaming and issues like that in our video we'll be filling it directly with an f-150 from brew tools using the filtering kit and at the end of this video we'll also have some tips and tricks on filling kegs and how to troubleshoot some problems so stick around to the end if you like this shirt you can buy it uh, in the link below as well as other cool shirts that look like of uh, this and that all right enough talking let's get to filling some kegs we are going to fill this and the, we are going to know our volume of this this is the 20 liter version we're going to know our volume by weighing it science Another uh, great aspect about these is that this, this is already CO2 purged and sanitized. So all you need to do is make sure you sanitize this connection, but otherwise it's good to go. You don't have to clean a keg and do all that kind of crap. Now we keg. And then I'll also sanitize the beer line. So this will be attached to our coupler fitting and you'll see how we use this, but this is how we are able to regulate the CO2 in and out. So pretty much everything that is touching the beer that might go into the beer is sanitized. A nice thing also about these fittings is these are the John Guest fittings, which most of these BSP fittings have these gaskets. So you can just hand tighten them and you don't have to uh, tighten them like crazy every time. And then what I like to do for this fitting is I, I don't really like to dunk this, even though maybe you can, comment below if you can, I don't know. Uh, but I just kinda, just dip the tip. I don't like it soaking with this, but you know, just dip the tip. Whoa, 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 pump the brakes there a bit. So I realized in editing this, that I didn't really talk so much about the filling coupler. I just wanna briefly talk about this before we get a bit too deep. So the way this works, this has a beer line in, and then you also have a CO2 line in. This, in our case, is for applying pressure to the outside of the bag after we are done filling. And then we also have a CO2 or gas line out. And then think of this as sort of like a spunding valve. So we want the pressure around our bag to be lower than our filling pressure. And as we're filling it up, we need to release more and more pressure to fill the bag, just like you would in any oxygen-free filling. Also, this type of coupling, which is a K-coupling, the principles here apply the same as if you had any type like a Sankey keg or anything like that. The only difference here is our kegs just have bags which we're filling. So I have my sanitizer solution right here. I'm going to spray on the inside of this butterfly valve, sanitize this, and then this is how we're going to purge this volume of CO2 with this blow off. And one important pro tip is to make sure that you put this to the side because the butterfly valve will smack onto it and you will realize that in the middle of trying to do something and it won't be fun. So I'm, I like using the finest filter. What you can see is that this whole filter goes on the outside so beer comes on the outside and then coming out through this port will be our filtered, obviously, uh, beer. This way we don't get hot particulates or any um, unwanted yeast or, or yeast clumps in our final product. Uh, is to purge this line of oxygen. So connect CO2, turn it on. I like to purge five times. So now we have filled this space with CO2, then I'm gonna attach 
the beer line to here. Now I want to purge this line with CO2 that I've pressurized in here. So I can turn on the valve here and then you could hear it purge a bit. Now we just make sure we sanitize the top here. And then we are going to connect our key keg so it fits into those grooves. You turn it clockwise so you can't turn it anymore. And then you lock it down. This right now is showing the pressure inside our bag. So I'm releasing it to be closer to the pressure of our tank, which I've pressurized to about 0.1 to 0.2 bar over our carbonation pressure, which was at 0.5 bar at one degree C. Tear the scale. Now, going to fill this up with beer. Open up the beer line and, and then beer will start flowing. Release some pressure. You're gonna see Beer starts filling the keg and we can see it by the weight going up. And we can regulate how much by this off flow of CO2. So it's going a bit fast. You could dial it back a bit with just small adjustments on the CO2 vent. So now it's filling. All right, now we filled our kegs. So there's some tips and tricks that I've learned in filling some kegs. One tip is that with these kegs is you actually do not need to use CO2 as your pressurizing gas. And that's one of the advantages of these kegs. So you can use, for example, a Linder filler and a compressed air. That way you could serve at a festival or something like that. And really all your beer is contained nice and hermetically sealed inside the bag. And then you're just pressurizing the outside of the bag. So you can actually use compressed air, nitrogen, methane, whatever you want. Another tip is when you're done filling them, they actually sell tops or clips that seal the top and keep it nice and clean and sterilized. Plan on transporting your keg or anything like that, I recommend that you use these. Finally, another tip that I have is you fill a bit slow on your first kegs. I'm typically doing, I'm typically going like three to four liters per minute. So that's quite slow, but you really wanna make sure that you're not having too much of foaming issues. As long as you're keeping that pressure quite close to your filling pressure, you shouldn't have too much issues. All right, that does it for me today. So feel free to like or subscribe the video. Otherwise, you know what? I'm just gonna leave you with some awesome garden B-roll. Let's go. Yeah. Pumping the polys, baby. Mm.